In this week's painting tutorial, we're going back to advanced portrait painting. But before we get started, I just want to give some advice to anyone who's just starting out in painting or drawing, regardless of what medium you're using. I get a lot of messages and comments about learning how to paint, so I just want to give you some of my opinions. One of the ways that I see it is that getting a painting to be perfect or even just right, technically or conceptually, is impossible. It'll never happen. One of the main reasons that I stuck with painting all these years is because some part of every painting I complete is always in some way a failure. And as long as I can't get a picture to be as good as I want it to be, there'll always be something for me to tackle tomorrow. And trust me, I know that this failure in painting can be scary and even brutal at times, but because of it, you get a great excuse to start another painting, to try it again. The most common complaint is that I don't have the skill or the talent or I just don't know how to paint. But yet, yeah, nobody does. No one naturally knows how to draw or paint. It's something that you work on and get better and better at. Like everything else, it's a skill that you develop with time. And one of the biggest parts of that is observation, learning to see. This is something that I'm still learning every single day, and hopefully it's something I'm learning right into my old age. And it's one of the great things about painting portraits or painting people, just seeing all that's familiar. Not to judge or proselytize any of that, but just to observe. So one thing that I found myself doing is that I don't really try to conquer that failure or that fear of failure. I actually found myself using it as a type of motivation because in painting, I just never get bored of it. There's always something new. There's always something I want to get better at. So that's one of the ways that I look at it. I take it seriously, but not too seriously because no painting is ever as good as you want it to be. And with that mindset, I'll just keep on trying and I hope you do the same. So let's start this tutorial. Up on the screen now is a high resolution photo of my completed painting. This video is in 4K, so if you're gonna be painting along with me, just set this to full screen, take a screenshot, and you could use this as your reference. And like always, on the members page, I'll be posting the gridded version that I used to transfer the drawing over to my canvas, along with the reference photo. This is the main color mixture that I used to paint this portrait. It's the basic flesh tone, which kind of sets the mid-tones. This is a transparent color, so the way that I'm going to be getting out my highlights is just like drawing. I'm going to be erasing into the paint to pull them out. And besides this flesh tone mixture, I'm also going to be using pure sepia and pure black right from the bottle to spray over the top in a few areas to cool down some of the shadows. I'll talk about that later on in this video or in next week's part two, but for 95% of it, I'm going to be using that flesh tone mixture. That's going to set all my tones and all my values. Just like always, I have a photo of my completed painting on the left side so you can see what we're working towards and the right side is going to be the tutorial. I'll be starting this painting by painting the left eye first. This is where I start all of my portraits. There's no particular reason for this. It's just where I'm most comfortable, but you could start wherever you'd like. I'm starting by painting in the iris here and you can see in my completed painting that the iris is very dark. It's kind of in a shadow. There's not much light hitting it and that transition point between the iris, the limbo ring and the pupil is almost indistinguishable. So I'm starting with the color CP here and just spraying in the outer contours. To paint in these lines sharp, I'm using one of these small circle templates that are basically used for drawing and these are awesome for painting in eyes. It has a bunch of different sized circles so this is amazing for painting in all different types of eyes and also the parts of the eye, like the iris and the pupil. So once I have those outer lines in, I need to get the bottom part of this iris painted in, but the lower eyelid is blocking it. So I'm gonna use a different shield for this. Any kind I have, I'm just gonna take it, line it up, and then spray over the top. I'll do the same thing here for the top part of the iris, using any shields I have, anything that fits that curve close enough, and then spray over it. The goal here isn't complicated, it's just to get paint down in the iris. So we have something there, kind of like a base value, and then I could use that to decide if I need to go darker in some areas or if I need to pull out highlights. And speaking of highlights, there's a bright specular highlight on the upper left hand side of this iris. So you can see what I did here. I just lined up a corner of a shield and sprayed over it. This way the paint gets below it and to the left and leaves a really bright area in the center. And remember that there's always a bunch of ways to go about painting. I didn't need to use a shield here. I could have sprayed in paint and then used an eraser later to scratch it out. It's always best to paint in the way that's easiest for you that you're most comfortable with and not just to copy someone else because that's the way they're doing it. What I've always liked to do over the years is just try a bunch of different techniques and then decide what works best. So the next part up is to paint the whites of the eye. This is called the sclera and what I want to do here is I want a cooler tone 
rather than the warm tone that we got from the sepia for the iris and pupil. So I'm switching from the color sepia to black by Createx Illustration Colors. This color black is a transparent color and I added to that transparency by reducing it about 20 to 30% with some distilled water. What I'm doing here is lining up my shields with these eyelids and then just lightly, very, very lightly dusting this paint onto the whites of the eye. You can't see it here, but I'm pulling back the smallest amount on this airbrush trigger I'm keeping it about six to eight inches away. And I'm also spraying at a low PSI, around 20 for this whole painting. That way it just helps give me less paint, giving me more control. I say this all the time, but you need to be really careful with the color black because it gets dark so incredibly quick. So just try to spray a small amount, step back from your painting, see what it looks like. If you need to add more, you could do it later. I'm spraying a small amount of this black paint on the left side of this eye. This way it's gonna help add to that 3D effect that dark shadow is going to make it look like that part of the eye is rolling away. At this point, I want to start painting in the upper eyelid, so I'm going to switch over to that flesh tone mixture that I showed in the beginning of the video. I'm using my shield to line up with the transition point between the sclera and the upper eyelid, and then spraying a small amount of paint above it. This crease above the upper eyelid is pretty dark. I'm going to start with this flesh tone, but I'll use a darker color later. I'm just lining up my shield here, spraying directly over the top of it, I'm not concerned with spraying on the shield again because this is so dark I want to get a good amount of paint down. I'm going to be adding a fair amount of texture into this portrait so I'm starting here with this skin texture template that I use for most of my portraits and I'm just lining it up over the top of this upper eyelid spraying over it very lightly then removing it to see what it looks like. If I need to add more I could just spray some more paint. If you use a skin texture template like this it's important not to spray too much paint because you can't see your canvas underneath. That shield is going to be blocking it. So it's always best to spray less, lift it up, see what it looks like. And then if you need to add more, you could spray more. So at this point, now that I have the sharp lines in, the shield got those in place, I could switch over to the airbrush freehand and start adding in the values that I see. If you look at the eye on the completed painting on the left side of the screen, you'll see that the light source is above and over to the left. That's where the reflection is, that specular highlight in the eye. So that means the right part of this upper eyelid is gonna be darker, it's gonna be in shadow. So I'm gonna spray more paint on the right, and as I go over to the left side, I'm gonna spray less paint. So once these are in, I'm gonna sharpen some areas up a bit more and darken them up. So I'll use my shield like I'm doing here, line these up with my curves and spray some more paint. I'm gonna switch over to my ink eraser, which is aggressive and will remove this paint and I'll start in the center here and toward the left and just start scratching out some of this paint on the upper eyelid. This will add texture and of course it's going to add some highlights. Like I said before, the right side of this upper eyelid is in shadow and the left side needs to be lighter. Since I'm only using transparent colors, there's only two ways that I could lighten up an area. The first way is to spray less paint and the second is to erase into that paint. Either option will work just fine. If you want it smoother, you use the airbrush and you spray less paint. That's gonna give you a very soft gradient. But if you want some more texture, like I generally want in my paintings, I'll spray the area of the highlight a bit darker and then use the eraser to erase into it. With the eraser here, I'm also gonna pull out a highlight in the whites of the eye on the right side of this, close to the iris. This is pretty subtle, so I'm using a very light amount of pressure and I'm erasing in small circular motions, letting them overlap to give a smooth and even highlight. If you remember before, we sprayed some extra black paint on the left side of the sclera that added the shadow that made it look like that part was rolling away, going farther away from us. And here, where it's brighter, this is gonna look like it's closer to us, just giving that illusion of a 3D effect. Painting or drawing in a realistic style is just an illusion of representing a 3D world on a two-dimensional surface. And for that illusion to work, the easiest way that I like to think about it is that we use dark areas of paint and perspective to make something look like it's farther away. And then we add the brighter and more detailed areas to make something look closer. If we combine those two, we get the effect of a realistic painting. But like everything in painting, that's not true 100% of the time. I'm kind of simplifying it here. But to me, that's just one of the easiest ways to go about it and think about it. Just focus on what you see and you'll be fine. To add in these very thin eyelashes, I'm using my favorite technique, which is to use a black colored pencil. I sharpen this in just a normal electric pencil sharpener, so I get a really sharp point at the end. This way I can draw in some very thin lines. And what I'm doing here is I'm following my pencil drawing underneath. You can clearly see my initial drawing, which I drew with a 4H pencil using a grid. And I'm basically using this to draw right over those lines, adding in these eyelashes where I see that they need to be as I'm looking at my reference, noticing that they're a bit thinner at the top and they get a little bit wider as they get toward the base. 
So I'll just add some more of the colored pencil toward the bottom, kind of widen out. That way we get almost like a triangle shape, a very narrow one that starts wider at the base and then gets very narrow as it moves up to the top. So once those are added in, I'm going back to my airbrush with the flesh tone and I'm spraying to the left of the eye. You'll see that there's a shadow here being cast from the hair above it. So I just sprayed that in freehand to get a soft shadow there. To define the edge of the face, I'm switching over to the color black and using a shield, lining this up and spraying to the left where the hair is going to be. This way I get a very sharp line which separates the hair from the actual portrait itself. I'm also going to use this black paint like I'm doing here to spray into some of these areas that need to be darker. I'm using my shield to paint these in which helps sharpen those lines a bit more. And this black paint is going to be doing two things. First of all, it's obviously darkening the value because we're spraying some more transparent paint making it darker. But the other thing is that the black helps cool down this flesh tone. And by cool down the flesh tone, what I mean by that is that the hue is going to be slightly less orange. Flesh tones are always in the orange range. So when you add a bit of black over the top, which is kind of like a blue, it helps shift the color temperature from that very warm flesh tone to a more neutral one. A lot of times with the color black, I like to think of it like a very desaturated dark blue. And since blue and orange are complementary colors, when you spray them over the top of each other, they're going to neutralize more toward a gray. There's a few subtle wrinkles here above the upper eyelid, so I'm going to go back to the flesh tone, and what I'm doing here is just using a ripped piece of paper. If you watch any of my other tutorials, you'll know that I love using ripped paper. It works so well for this, and the way this works is by adding a shadow for a wrinkle. So I line up the paper where I want a wrinkle to be, lightly spray over it, then that texture from the edge of the rip paper gets transferred onto the canvas. And then what you're seeing right here is the shadow for each one of these wrinkles. So I'll just add a few of them here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this color to lightly spray over the top of this. This is called a glaze, a transparent paint sprayed over an existing color. And this glaze basically acts like the mid-tone for these wrinkles. We're of course painting in some of the surrounding skin texture, but for the wrinkle itself, we now have the shadow and the midtone. The next thing we need to add is the highlight. And like I said before, we know that the light source is above the subject and over to the left. That means each one of these highlights is going to be above and to the left of each one of these shadows. So I'll use a sand eraser here, which is sharpened to a very sharp thin point at the end. And I'll come in right between each one of these shadows above and to the left and scratch out some paint. And then once we have these highlights, midtones, and shadows together, we get the illusion of wrinkles. Just like before on the eye, the highlight looks like the area that's closer to us, and then the shadow looks like a part farther away. And to me, this is the key to get a painting to look realistic or to look lifelike. It's just a combination and a bunch of small illusions that eventually come together to form one portrait when you stand back and look at it from a distance. Because right now, this may not look like wrinkles to you. It just looks like some bright lines next to some darker lines, which is what it is. But a viewer doesn't look at a painting that way, at least not initially. When they're seeing it, they're seeing the whole thing as one. So if I put up the completed painting like you're seeing right here, you can see that you don't notice that right away. Your eye isn't drawn to those small wrinkles. It just takes in the whole image at once. But all those small details, those small wrinkles, those small highlights come together to give you that final image, what you're seeing as a whole. So going back to the painting, for the eyebrow, I used the black colored pencil, just like I did before with the eyelashes. I followed the curve of the eyebrow itself and just sketched those in, a bunch of small lines together. Now I'm coming back with my airbrush with this flesh tone, spraying it right over the top. This eyebrow is going to need to be a lot darker later on. We'll have to spray some black paint in this, but for now we just want to kind of get it all together and get it in place. And as I'm painting, you'll constantly see me going back to some areas like I'm doing here. I'm going back to some of these wrinkles, some of these highlights, and reworking them. The reason for that is because as you get further into your painting and add more details, you're going to see the area that you just completed differently because now the surrounding area is not pure white anymore. It's got some color, it's got some texture, so that's always going to affect the way that you see the surrounding values. So let's move along to this lower eyelid and some of the skin texture below the eye. The first thing I'm doing here is using my shields with this flesh tone to just paint in some of the shadows that I see here around the corner of the eye where the tear duct is. Just like the eye itself, the tear duct is naturally wet, so you'll usually see some pretty high contrast in there, some dark shadows, and some really bright highlights or specular highlights. So if you look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen, pay attention to where you see these shadows. There's a shadow right below the lower eyelid, and then there's a darker shadow right underneath here, just below the eye. So I use my shield to line it up and then just lightly spray over it to get that in. 
from here I'll do the rest freehand because this line isn't that sharp, it's not really that defined. So a combination of a shield and then freehand gives you kind of like that middle ground. It's not too sharp, but it's not too soft. When you're painting portraits, you'll notice that the lower eyelid slightly protrudes. So if the light's above it, like it is here, it's gonna catch some light. And you can see in my completed painting that there's a thin highlight along the lower part of this lower eyelid. So I just erase it out with the eraser. I'll go back to the airbrush, glaze some color over the top here, just to kind of darken it up, adding some more paint to the left side and to the right side, again, adding to that roundness. So after I added some more highlights and some shadows using the airbrush and the eraser, I noticed that this small shadow underneath the entire eye is actually too soft. So I'll use my shield here, spray over it, and just get that line in a bit more defined. And just like the upper eyelid, I'm going back to the black colored pencil to sketch in these thin eyelashes along the lower eyelid. Now generally the inner part of an eyelid is going to be wet. So I want to try to get that effect in this painting by bringing up some more contrast on the lower part of this eyelid. I'll use my electric eraser here, starting on the right side around the tear duct, and then just start tapping in a bunch of small dots. I want these dots to kind of overlap, and I don't want them extremely bright, so I'm not really pressing in on the eraser. I'm just lightly touching it to the canvas. And then to blend those dots together and add more of an even texture in this highlight, I'm using my stick eraser here and just going over this area. When I do this, it's erasing out some of the paint in between those dots, so it just helps to kind of even everything out. At this point, this eye is good enough. It's basically done, but like I talked about before, I'm just going over it a few more times here, adjusting out a few areas that I think need to be fixed. So let's move along to the left cheek, just below the eye. The first thing I want to do here is add some texture to it, just to break up that naturally soft look that you get from spraying an airbrush. So I'm using my skin texture template with that flesh tone mixture, and then just working my way around this area, spraying just a bunch of small dots. Using a skin texture template like this is definitely not necessary. It kind of adds an extra graininess to the image, which I kind of like, but some people don't. If you're just starting out and learning to paint, I would skip this step. I would just really focus on the large values rather than going in for small detail and texture. So speaking of large values, we're going to have to add in the shadows and the highlight on this cheek to define the shape of it. Look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen and see if you can decide which areas are darker and which areas are lighter. It's pretty subtle, but the subtlety is the key to this to giving that rounded 3D shape that we're going for in this painting. The brighter areas, like I said a bunch of times already, are just going to look like they're closer, like they're raised. One of the traditional painting ways to go about this and to think about it is to think of these values like different planes. On the left side of the cheek here, we have one of the darker shadows. So we're going to have to spray some more paint there. And this is going to be a plane moving toward the back of the portrait. And then as we move up to the center of the cheek, where the light is hitting it, where we have the highlight, that's going to be the brighter plane closer to us. And in between those two planes at the transition point is the half tone or the mid tone. But when I'm painting, I'm not really thinking about planes. I'm just focusing on what I see. I notice that the left side of the cheek and the right side closer to the nose are darker. And then in the center, it's lighter. And because I'm using a transparent color, all I do is spray more paint on the left side of the cheek and then again on the right side. And in the center, I spray less. And then to bring the center forward a little bit closer to us, I'll switch over to the eraser and erase into it, making that highlight brighter. So let's finish up the first part of this tutorial by painting in the nose. And the first thing I'm doing here is just adding some paint and some texture along the bridge between the two eyes just to get that basic form in. When I paint the nose, I generally like to start with the most obvious parts. So in this case, we're going to paint the nostril, which is the area which is farthest away. And because it's tucked away below the nose itself, it's also going to be the darkest because it's in shadow. To start out, I'm using the flesh tone with a bunch of different shields, and then I'm just lining it up around my initial line drawing, seeing where these shadows are underneath the nose in the nostril. And while I'm doing this, I'm just lining up my shield with my drawing, spraying over it where I want the darker values. No shield is ever going to fit a curve perfectly, so you'll see me just kind of switching around between different shields, just getting parts of each one to fit and then spraying over it. And if I didn't spray my line in correctly, I'll just do what I'm doing here, use my eraser to clean it up. So just like the eye and the areas around the eye and the cheek itself, the nose is going to have large values of light and dark to define its shape. In this portrait, it's obvious because the lighting is pretty dramatic and you can clearly see where the darks and the lights are. We know that the light source is above and to the left of the subject and the nose protrudes from the face. 
So the center in front of the nose is going to be catching the most light, meaning that it's going to be the brightest part. So how do we get an area to look bright? We need dark values surrounding it. So I'm going to spray more paint on the left side and the right side of the nose. And then of course, along the bottom where the nostrils are. And again, because this is a dark transparent paint, all I have to do is spray more paint to get those shadows darker. And even with that small amount of paint that I just added in on the left, right, and bottom, you can see the shape of the nose starting to come together. Of course, we'll need to darken these shadow areas up a bit more, but we'll get to that later. Remember that painting is a slow process, and you want to just work your way to the final painting. You don't want to try to do it right away. If you just rush toward that final painting, what I found myself doing a lot of times is getting an area too dark. And if you're using only transparent paint, it's a real nightmare to try to clean up and fix. So the way I think of it to myself is just always go light and just slowly, slowly get darker. With the right nostril, I did the same thing as the left, just used my shield to spray in the paint. You can see also that I sprayed some more paint toward the top of the nostril. This way it just helps add to that illusion that the top of the nose or the front of the nose is casting a shadow inside the nostril. Now let's define the right side of the nose by painting in the cheek to the right of it. I'm sorry that my hand is blocking the camera here, but I'm just taking a shield and lining it up with the right side of the nose. And what I'm doing here is spraying paint to the right of the nose where the cheek is going to be. Since the light source is to the left, the nose is going to have a cast shadow over here to the right. So that's basically what I'm spraying in, the cast shadow from the nose onto the cheek. And as I spray this in, it's going to make the nose to the left of it look a bit lighter, like there's some reflected light hitting it. And this cast shadow is going to need to be very dark, but I don't want to jump to that right away. I just want to go slow, slowly build up to that final value. Since everything is in place now, I'm going to commit more paint to the shadows and then use my eraser to start erasing out the highlights in the center. Now the highlights are going to be in the center of the nose, but of course we know where that light source is. So the left side of the center of the nose is going to be a bit brighter than the actual center itself. Itself. So all I'll do here is erase some more paint to the left center of the nose where this bright specular highlight is. And then go right back over to the airbrush with the flesh tone in it to start darkening up these shadows some more. Now if you left the nose like this, this will work just fine for the final painting. But one thing that I'm doing in this painting is I'm trying to add a fair amount of texture, almost to make it look kind of like film grain. I'll talk about why I'm doing that next week. It's basically just an experiment to see what the portrait looks like. But if you don't like this effect, just skip the skin texture template. So at this point, the shadows are in, the skin texture is in. I just need to go back to the eraser and start erasing out these highlights a bit more to brighten it up and add some more of that contrast. So I'll start in the left center of the nose. That's where the brightest area is in the reference. Erase out more paint there by using more pressure. And another way to erase out more paint is to use the same amount of pressure, but go over it a few times. And as I said earlier in this video, once I finish a new part of the painting, I generally will go back to an area that I just worked on to fix it because I'm seeing it differently now. And that's exactly what happened here. After I finished painting in this nose, I now notice that the cheek over to the left of it is too light. It needs to be darkened up, so while I'm doing that, I'm also going to add some texture, but this time I'm just going to do it freehand. So first I'll take the small shield that I have and then line it up with the left side of the nose. I'll spray paint to the left of it, that way it'll darken it up. And then from here I could just go to the airbrush freehand and start darkening up these values. So I'm going to spray a bunch of small dots here, and since this isn't a shield, it's just freehand, these dots are going to be a bit softer. Now you may have noticed this in some of my other videos, but when I'm spraying skin texture like this, where I want a bunch of small dots, I'm kind of shaking my airbrush around. You'll see it kind of jiggling. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I notice that if I shake the airbrush like this, I can get more of a random texture. I'm not spraying dots where I think they should be. They kind of just come out randomly. I'm still focusing and directing my airbrush where I want these dots, but in that controlled area, I'm getting some randomness, which is very helpful in portrait painting. No one told me this or taught me it. It's just something that I figured out. If I kind of shake the airbrush, I get a bit more of a natural texture. And it's not just used for skin texture. You can use it for plenty of different things. So on that note, that's where I'm going to finish up the first part of this video. And what we'll do is next week we'll be finishing this one up. In next week's video, we're going to be painting in the mouth, the surrounding skin texture, and the chin, and then moving up to the right eye and pulling it all together. As always, I hope you found this video fun and interesting, and hopefully learned something. And before I go, I want to of course say thank you so much to these generous people who help support this channel as channel members. 
And I want to welcome the newest channel member, Bay Maven, who joined at a very generous tier three. Thank you so much for joining. Greatly appreciate it and welcome. So that's it for this week's video. I hope everyone's well, and I'll see you back here next Friday.